Welcome to the Noonday Meditation with Wayne Vernon. Matthew chapter 5, 31 and following. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, causes her to become an adulteress, and anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery. The Jewish law states in Deuteronomy, whoever divorces his wife, let him do it legally, giving her divorce documents or papers and her legal rights. This law was, however, interpreted differently by Jewish schools of thought, Shammai and Hillel to be specific. The one, Shammai, was strict and specific. The other, Hillel, was laxed and allowed divorce for any frivolous reasons. Our Lord, however, recognizing the that Many of his hearers were using the provision in the law as a cover for selfishness and whim while pretending to be righteous just because they were using the law and behaving as though they were legal about it according to the uh, message translation. Jesus called it for what it is pretense disingenuous so to, to, to this ungodly practice that existed among some of his jewish audience jesus spoke out men who were ending their marital relationships for for any dissatisfaction with their wives jesus called it out he called out the frivolity and abuse of such act and he did not countenance it. He condemned it and established the inherent evil in such practice. He cited the provision in the law but intimated at the circumvention of it by many of his Jewish hearers. Our Lord's instruction sought to protect the integrity of the law, the well-being of the woman, as well as the sanctity of marriage. Those who chose to be laxed in their response to the law by divorcing their wives for random reasons are admonished by Jesus to discontinue their practice because it is an evil, sinful practice. He says the only reason permitted for divorce is marital unfaithfulness, pornea. Pornea covers a wide range of sexual practices. You see, sex consummates a marital union. It seals the union. Without sex, the union is not consummated and can be annulled. It therefore stands to reason that the very act uh, that, that seals the marriage, that it also threatens the integrity of the union and breaks it. No, here is the challenge, loved ones. Remember that our Lord's conversation has been about the condition of the heart. And I believe that this is a very controversial passage. However, if there is any con passage in the Bible that requires us to pay close attention to the context and the content, this is the very pericope that really requires us to pay attention to the context. So here is what naturally flows. Jesus says it is in the heart, the motive, the intent that truth is located. A man who abandons his wife because of one-sided dissatisfaction, 
when she in her mind and action is still committed to the relationship and has not broken the marital vow by engaging in any sexual activity outside of the marriage, he causes her to become an adulteress. You see, she is still in her heart committed to this man. She has not done anything to break the marriage. The marriage is broken by sexual interaction. Now, here is, the, here, here is another kicker. Our Lord says, anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery. That is, a woman who has been divorced by her husband for reasons other than sexual unfaithfulness. This woman is still committed to her marriage. In her heart, she's, she's asking, why are we breaking this relationship? I have not broken it. Notice here that nothing is said about the man who divorces his wife and if he remarries again. We can explore that a little bit more, right? But anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness causes her to become an adulteress. He drives her into it in case she marries again. He exposes her to it. If you divorce your wife unless she has already made herself an adulteress by sexual promiscuity, says one writer. You are responsible for making her an adulteress. Whatever choices and whatever situation she gets into because she has been put away because of frivolous reasons, she is exposed. Notice that the weight is on the husband's head for abusing his wife by trifling with the law. Loved ones, let us be honest today. Let us not use legal cover to mask our moral failures according to the message translation. You see, when we lost and stray because of our own penchants and, and, and proclivities. We will be disingenuous in our relationships. We will run from one relationship to the other because we lost and we pine after other women. No one is perfect, loved ones. We all experience disappointments in our relationships because we are not perfect. We are not perfect, no one. As witnesses for Jesus, however, we, especially men, cannot change wives on a whim. A real Christian, says one writer, ought rather to beg of God the grace to bear patiently and quietly the imperfections of his wife than to think of the means of being parted from her. Believers, the world is watching. What will they see of our marriage today that will be a light for them in this dark world? What is our commitment to our marriage? We have to maintain firm and strong Christian values in this regard because Marriages are under threat and the world is watching. What will they see of our marriage today that will be a light for them in this dark world? Should you need further instruction in these matters, please feel free to text the number 647-696-0422. Should you desire to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, please text the word salvation to this number as well. We want to remind you of my book, Six Practices of Effective Leadership. You can get your copy on Amazon today. The link is conveniently provided for you in the description below. It would be lovely for you to give this as a gift to family and friends at Christmas time. Your manager, supervisor, your co-workers, pastor, leaders in your church, leaders in your community organization. This is a very good Christmas present for them. We look forward to hearing from you as to how core leadership services may be of help to you in your organization. 
to partner with you to prepare young leaders, new leaders, upcoming leaders for their leadership roles. We would be delighted to support you in this regard. Let us hear from you at some point. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Noonday Meditation with Pastor Wayne Vernon. Please forward this study to your friends, relatives, associates, neighbors, and all of those persons who share your social network. If you have a prayer request, please feel free to communicate with us and we will commit to supporting you in prayer. Until we meet again on Monday. Shalom.